Hello all my lovely friends out there in YouTube land. It is your old friend Kelly with BC Tactical with his trusty sidekick over in the corner, RC. Our producer. Yes, RC Burns, the producer extraordinaire who never wants to be on camera. Yet he tells me that I ramble on, but I digress. All right, so we got some amazing, crazy stuff to talk about tonight. First thing I'm going to talk about, sponsor. Mountain Dew. Hey, the choice of Appalachia. That's right, my friend. I'm a Southern boy and I have Southern taste. So, sweet tea and Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. It'll get you going in the morning. Won't let you down all day long. You got to build something big like a barn or something. Just make sure you carry plenty of Mountain Dew out there with you. I don't. I can't even explain the taste, but The flavor to carbonation ratio is perfect with Mountain Dew. So whoever out there in the Pepsi company is, if whoever's doing this do, thank you for doing the do. Viewers out there, you guys should do the do. I'm doing the do. You would, you wish you you were doing the do. Do you? I do. Do the do. All right, there we go. So there's that, and I uh, got a couple of huge announcements, man. Huge announcements. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have uh, a friend of mine out in Australia, Stuart Unger. Uh, he's a famous platypus hunter. And uh, people are being like, platypus hunter, you can't hunt platypus, that's illegal. Stuart Unger hunts platypus. And you know what he uses to catch them with? His ass scratchers. That's right. Somebody out there is going to say, what's an ass scratcher? your hands, man. So anyway, platypus, man. There's about 300,000 platypi or platypus or whatever you want to call them. Platypus, I guess. Platypi, maybe. There's about 300,000 left. But what if one gets in your swimming pool? You can't shoot that platypus. It's his swimming pool now. Stuart Unger. Famous platypus hunter extraordinaire. Nobody gonna fool no platypus, man. Something with a bill and legs and crawling around and poisonous mammal. Reminds me of my, reminds me of my ex-mother-in-law, poisonous mammal, lays eggs, got a bill on it and webbed toes. Anyway, so I digress on that as well. Hey, there's a bell up here. Somewhere, uh, there it is. Click that bell. It'll tell you when I'm going to put out a video. And uh, then there's this subscribe button right here. You see that? I don't know how to video edit and put one on there. So I just, this one's uh, just a piece of, yeah, card stock up there. And hey, here's the like button right here. So do some of the card stock stuff. Hey, uh, my friend Stuart Unger out in Australia has sent me a package. I've got the tracking on it and everything. It's doing its thing. It's coming. I don't know when it's going to get here. It takes at least a minimum of 21 days to get here from Australia. So Stuart, my friend on the Gold Coast, I appreciate you. Stuart tells me the other day, man, more people need to watch your channel. I said, hey, I agree. You know how to help me with that? And Stuart says, I'll give a blade. A blade. Which I'm guessing, I don't know, Australian guys, you know, I don't know what kind of blades they use down there. But anyway, over there, wherever they're at. But, you know, Australians are, are badasses, man. They just, they're born badass. You know, I wish Americans were more like Australians. But anyway, Australians are born badass. So he's going to send a blade to the 50th viewer of one of my previous videos. Hey, that's a stand-up thing to do, Stuart. So the package with the blade is coming. It's on its way. Can't promise when it's going to get here, but it's on its way. And the 50th viewer was a cat named Travis Pratt. Hey out there, Travis. You won that blade from Australia, man. Don't know what kind of blade it's going to be, but... It's going to be yours. I'm going to get it. I'm going to look at it and say, look, everybody, this is Blade from Australia, and I'm going to send it straight to Travis Pratt. You know where Travis Pratt lives, man? Travis Pratt lives in Maine. That makes him my main man. He hangs out at all the breweries and pubs around there. When people need something fixed, they call Travis Pratt, man. He is the fix-it man extraordinaire in Maine. So that makes him everybody's main man. And he's a southern boy. People are like, southern? He lives in Maine but he lives in Southern Maine, Southern Maine. So 
that counts, man. That that really does count. RC says no, but I say it does. So congratulations, Travis Pratt, my main man. Uh, we're gonna send you that uh, that cool blade whenever it gets in here, man. Plus, I'll send you some some bastard cat stuff, like some stickers and stuff like that. You know, wooden nickels and you know, cool stuff, man. Uh, you know, uh, I'm thinking that Travis Pratt is that guy who canoed down the Piscataqua River. Is that you? Is that the Travis Pratt in Maine? Because I know, I know there was a Travis Pratt who was on like the Today Show once or something. And uh, and he canoed down the Piscataqua River. And the thing about the Piscataqua River is, one, it, it, people don't believe that's actually what it's called, but you can look it up. Look it up. It's like by New Hampshire and Maine and all that. But anyway, Piscataqua. That's actually the way it's pronounced. Even though I'm from Arkansas, I know how to pronounce it because I saw it on the Today Show and the guy was like, I just canoed down it. You know, I don't know what all the big fanfare is. But he canoed down it while he was standing up in the canoe. Had to have a really long paddle. So, Travis, congratulations on uh, on traveling down the Piscataqua River. Maybe some of your friends in town will now recognize your major accomplishments. And also... Congratulations on winning the Australian Blade. All right. So, Stuart Unger and Travis, two of my favorite people in the whole world. Thank you, dudes. You're what makes, uh, you're, you guys are what makes us uh, do this channel every day. Guys like you. All right. So, today, RC's wanting me to talk. We got some deer hunting going on very soon. Uh, it's October here in Arkansas. I know, man. It's October here in Arkansas. RC <laughs> says that means it's October everywhere. That's true. So October here in Arkansas. So that means deer hunts right around the corner. So today we are going to talk about muzzle loading, muzzle loading basics. A lot of people say, "Hey, man, it costs too much muzzle loading and all this now." It doesn't cost that much. So I'm going to show you a setup that I've got. It's cheap, man. It's cheap. It's the one I use. I don't have like one of these $1,200 setups. Now you can go get you whatever you want. You can get you one of the cool fire stick setups. You go get you the Thompson Center. You do all this stuff, man. They shoot good. I ain't griping about them. But I'm going to tell you what else shoots. Just as good for $283. $283. That's a three-week paycheck in Arkansas. <laughs> so, $283, I got a CVA Wolf. CVA Wolf. CVA is uh, Connecticut Valley Firearms. Uh, this one was $283. Came with a scope. It's ready to hunt, man. Put the scope on it, sight it in. Go out and get a deer, man. Simple as that, right? That's what I do with it. And uh, anybody that says that you can't, Come on down, brother. I'll fix you some uh, tenderloin. You know what I'm saying? So it's got a decent scope on it that came with it. So you can't beat that. You know, most of them crummy scopes that ain't that good. But anyway, CVA Wolf, this is their bottom of the line. You know, it's the cheapest one that they offer. I like cheap. It hasn't blown up on me. Hasn't hurt me in any way. But it does kill deer. I can tell you that from experience. I got a freezer full, and this year, I'm gonna have a freezer full again. And me and RC is gonna be out there barbecuing that backstrap, baby. All right, so here we go. Muzzle loading basics. Now, when you see this thing in the store, you're gonna think, man, that ain't that, that ain't that gun that Kelly had. That thing's ugly. This whole thing was black everywhere, except for the barrel. And the barrel was stainless. And it was kinda chunky and ugly looking, man. But I took this one down to my old buddy at Lima 3 Dynamics, Aaron Clayton, giving you a shout out, my friend. That dude knows guns, man. And he put me on a swell paint job, just like that. So now it's got this cool paint job on it. You ain't gonna see it in the store like that. You can find them camoed up. I think they cost a little more. But anyway, he's got some spray cans and stuff there at his house, man, that he uses all the time. Me and his buddies, he didn't charge me nothing. Go out in your backyard, get your rag, man, some spray paint, put it on there. 
Anyway, then you got a cool looking gun. People are gonna say, damn, how much you spend for that? And you're gonna say $283. Find them on sale for $270. Anyway, got a good scope on it. I like it. Not only did I used to be a car salesman, I also used to sell muzzle loaders. No, that's not true. All right, so anyway, uh, let's talk about muzzle loading basics. Now that I've told you that you can get the CBA Wolf for about $285 scope included. All right, so if you don't know anything about muzzle loading, it's a little more complicated than just going out and shooting. A uh, rifle, put a bullet in, shoot it. That's all you got to do. This one, you got to put a bullet in. You got to put powder in it. You got to stick it down in there with that stick like you see in all them movies, like the Mel Gibson movies where they got tomahawks and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. That's the way muzzle loaders are. So that's the way you keep things fair with you and the deer, you know, because if a deer had a muzzle loader, that don't make no sense, does it? Anyway, <laughs> hopefully if you get in the woods, you don't see a deer with a muzzle loader. If you do, call me. All right, we'll have to double team that one. So we've got our muzzle loader. You just went and bought this thing or one similar like it, and you're like, now what? We got to buy a whole bunch of other junk to go with it. Like a powder measure, you need one of those. Uh, you can buy a kit at Walmart or somewhere like that, that, uh, you know, probably 15 or 20 bucks. And uh, it's got a bunch of crap in it. And you're going to be like, I don't know what that's for. And now you're going to know since you watch this video. So here we go. All right, basics. You'll see right here in front of the trigger guard that you got this little thing. You pull that little uh, lever back and it opens up your breech. Now, in your breech, you got this thing. You think, how do I put a bullet in that? You don't. This is the nipple. And basically, it unscrews. I'm like, man, that's a lot of work. It is. So, you can either get real fast at it or whatever. Now, you'll notice that the thread on this guy is long. You know why? Because you don't want it to blow out and hit you in the eye. That's why. That'd be bad. So anyway, in your breech, right here, gotta see through there now. In your breech, you got a nipple. Now, when you're getting ready to go hunting and all that stuff, you've got your slick breech nipple grease. This is your breech nipple. So, you use this nipple grease on this guy. The reason that you want to use nipple grease on this guy, and I know I can't stop saying Piscataqua, and I can't stop saying nipple grease. But anyway, you want to use your grease on your nipple because if you don't, after you fire this thing, you're going to try to get it undone. And as you can see, it's ready to be undone. It's kind of, you know, with your fingers, and it ain't going to want to come. You want to grease it. You don't have to grease it like crazy, but you need to put you some grease here and there up and down the threads, and then you need to spin it around and get it greased up. So that's the first thing you want to know. Grease that nipple. Say it with me. Grease that nipple. Come on, guys. Y'all do better than that. Grease that nipple. All right. I heard Travis saying it out there. He's getting ready to go back down that Piscataqua River. All right, so we talked about the nipple. All right, this is... You can call it your breech plug, whatever you want to do. So this is the breech plug and the beach, uh, breech plug nipple. Straight it. Grease it or you won't get it back out. Now, on some higher end models, they got a little quick thing. Just turn it, pull it out. That's it. You know, you want to spend the extra money? You know, whatever. But I'm going to get mine on the first shot, so I ain't going to have to worry too much about trying to you know, pull this out and reload it. You know, and that's the whole point. When you're unscrewing this thing, you got to get it out and then you got to put it back in and all this stuff. I mean, you got to do a bunch of stuff uh, when you're trying to clean it and get it all done and all that stuff. So anyway, there you go. But uh, some of them just pull right out. All right, so some of the little tools that you're going to need and you're going to get. Here's one. It's a powder measure. How does this work, you say? Well, you pull this thing down and it measures how many grains you're going to get. And then you just pour your grains out like that. That wasn't actually grain. That's not a, that was just for effect. So anyway, let's put your powder in there. 
after you put your powder in it, a lot of people miss this, but this is made a specific way. Like I'm gonna shoot 90 grains in mine. It's 50 caliber. I'm gonna shoot 90 grains. I put 90 grains in. Then I'm gonna close it. I may have a few grains fall out. That ensures that I've got 90 grains. Now, once I have it in here, I can pour it straight into the barrel or I can pour it into one of these guys. And basically, this is just to carry your stuff out. It's like a speed loader for a muzzle loader, man. So there you go. There's my 90 grains. And a lot of them, you know, tell you on the side or whatever, and it's got a little measuring deal. So there's that. Here's a couple of more that I've got. So there we go. Those are 100 grains each. So I got powder here, powder here, and here. I pull this guy out, and it's got me a couple of bullets in it. So here's me, a big old 50 caliber round. So that's what I'm going to shoot out of this hose. It's also got a Sabo on it. I get the Sabos because I like the way... When I put my bullet in, it's already on the end of the, sa the Sabo like that's on the end of it. When I put it in my barrel, stick it in there, it's already ready to go. And uh, it does a good job. Get you one of these little waterproof deals or whatever, put it on a keychain. It carries some of your 209 primers, your primers that you're going to use for your muzzle loader, and powder, and a couple of rounds. Powder measure. All right. So... Another tool you're probably going to get in one of those kits other than a powder measure is one of these guys. What do you think this does? Oh boy, it's not an anteater. Okay, what you do with this is you clean that breech plug because there's a primer that's going to sit right in here. Primer. That's where your 209 primer is going to go. So when the hammer strikes here, it's going to Take a little fire out the end right there, and that's what's going to ignite your powder. All right, and after you shoot it once, you need to make sure you take that out and clean it. You know, maybe a couple times, but I generally clean them after I shoot once. So, in that little kit that you can buy at Walmart for $15 or $20, you're going to get one of these guys. And that's a breech plug cleaner. All right, so you got that. Now, they're also going to have one of these deals. And you're going to say, what in the world is that for? I know it's got to be for something. Yep, it is. So, when you're loading that bullet in the end of your muzzle loader, it is not as easy as you think. It doesn't start as easy as you think. So, I have put my powder in either out of this guy you pour it in or if you want to you can do it directly out of this guy you pour it in then you're going to place your round right there into the barrel and as you'll notice it doesn't just slide down in there that's why you got this stick man that's what you got that for that's your push rod stick it down in there to get that guy started in there a lot of times you will take this it's got these little tools on the side, like this little area here, this area here, you know, this area here. So you can use it to push this way, or you can start it right here like this. And that's what you use to start the push with, because it's hard to get that bullet started. It's tight in there, man. It should be tight. If it's not tight, then you got a problem. All right, so once you get that in there, you get it started just a little bit. Then you take your charging rod and you push it down in there. Now, with your breech plug in and your powder in and your bullet, your round and everything, once you push it down, you need to figure out how far that rod goes down in there. Now, as you'll notice, for 90 grains of powder, I've got a little 
I've got a little place marked right there. Just take your pocket knife and go around it. Just scratch it out of there. You know? Like, that's actually for 100 grains, that's for 90 grains. So I got two different sizes there. So if I'm going to shoot 90 grains, it'll be there. That way, when I load this thing, before I get out to the stand and all that stuff, when I load this thing, if I look and it's not down to my marks that I have up here, then I know that it's not all the way down and I need to push again, okay? And this charging rod actually comes with this guy on the end like that, but I take it off because it doesn't go in its little carrier on the front of the rifles with that on there. But anyway, so that extends it a little bit, but I have, maybe you can see this, two little marks on there. I've got one mark here and one mark here. It goes a little deeper, that's for 90 grains. It's up a little bit more, that's 100 grains. Those are the only two that I use. Some people shoot 110. Some might want to shoot 120. I don't know. Personal choice, personal preference. I know what shoots well in my weapon, and that's what I'm going to use. So anyway, your little rod goes right in the front like that. Sticks up in there, out of the way. So, let's say we're getting ready to go. First thing you got to do, You've already cleaned this guy out. Remember the little holes. So we're going to put our breech plug in. We have greased it. Grease it with grease or grease, whichever one. People that live in Maine and uh, run up down the Piscataqua River, they probably uh, use grease. But I use grease down here. So I've greased it up good. And now you want to put it on and you... Make it good and tight, and you close it up. You're ready to go. Now, you take your powder in your little pre-done carrier thing or your little measuring deal, however you want to do it. Pour it in there. Then, you take your bullet. I prefer a Sabo round, but you don't have to have it. But it's going to be more accurate with it. Your bullet's going to be in there a little bit tighter. It's going to be a better fit. Trust me, man. Just put out a couple bucks get you some Sabo rounds, man. Some, or some little Sabo sleeves. All right, so there's our little Sabo sleeve. So we've got our powder in. We're ready to go. We've got our little ball starter here. <clears throat> We're going to push it. I'm not going to load it in here because I ain't going to want to fire it in here. And I don't want to sit around loaded. So anyway, we do that, we pull out our rod, and we push it down in there. Now, I, ask, I have a lot of people ask me about tamping and all that stuff. Man, if you want to be around on some, on some uh, explosive stuff, go ahead. That's your business, but I'm not going to, especially when I've got this thing up here by my hand. That'll come out, man. I've seen dudes shoot these rods out. But anyway, so... Put your little lines and marks on there and you won't have to. You will know when it's all the way down. And you don't have to tamp on it and beat on it. So, you've seen all that in the movies, man, back in the Revolutionary War and all this stuff. But trust me, man, this ain't old Bessie's musket. All right, so, we've done all these things. You got your powder in here. It's sitting down in here. You got your bullet in here. It's sitting right down in here. And... Everything is ready to go except you got to put in a 209 primer. These little primers right here. Uh, they sell them specifically for muzzle loaders. You can get 209 primers for shotguns or whatever. But, you know, I'd get the ones for muzzle loaders. They're not as hot. And when you shoot them, they don't leave old scuzzy bunch of stuff in your breech plug that you're going to have to clean out. All right, so that primer goes right into your breech plug just like that. You close it up, you cock, and fire when the time is right. That's it. Then you open it up, you take that old primer out, you start the process over again if you need a second shot. 
pour that in, put your bullet in, start it, rod, 209 primer, kabang. So if you need a second shot, that's what it's going to be like. So imagine being in the Civil War. So $283 for this, uh, you know, 15 bucks for a kit with this, and this, and some other little odd and end items. I don't, you know, that's about what you need, uh, you know. This guy here, I, I went out and bought the, the nice heavy brass one. I didn't want the cheap old whatever. So, you know, you might spend 15 or 20 bucks on one of those. And then, you know, hey, man, I say go ahead and put in a couple of extra bucks, get you one of these things, carry your primers and stuff around because that's, I don't know, man, it's just better. And you're like, man, that's a bunch of crap to carry around. It is. So I put all of that. I put uh, any of my survival equipment, blades, Rubber gloves. Make sure you take some rubber gloves with you when you're hunting because uh, you shoot something, man, you're going to have to clean it out. So I take rubber gloves with me, man, because uh, I've seen too many things with uh, bad stuff inside of them. So anyway, just get you a little pouch, man. Carry that with you. And uh, you'll have a place to carry all your bullets and rounds and all that stuff. Plus, uh, you need somewhere to carry that nipple grease. You don't really have to take that out there with you. Just grease it before you go. So anyway, that's muzzle loading basics, man. If anybody has any questions about uh, about muzzle loading or how to get involved in it or how to get started with it, hey, send us a, send us a shout, man. Uh, go down there and comment and tell us what you think. Say, man, your video's too dang long. That's 27 minutes. Muzzle loading basics. How long does it usually take to learn how to how to do muzzle loading? And I I talked about a bunch of other stuff. I went as fast as I could. So, hey, it's like watching an episode of Three's Company or something. You know, I watched Three's Company when I was a kid. Anyway, hey, there we go for another episode. Stuart Unger, Platypus Hunter, Gold Coast of Australia. Good to know you, my friend. I hope everything is well with you and yours. Travis Pratt, my main man, hanging out. Fishing up and down the Piscataqua River. <laughs> you know that? Piscataqua, man. That sounds like some boogie monster or something that live out here in the swamp. But anyway, hey, thank you guys for watching, commenting. And, and more than that, you guys have been a part of this channel, man. You guys are, are helping us out in a great way. So we love you guys. And uh, hey, to all you cats and characters out there, Hey, we hope you're having a wonderful day. We hope that uh, maybe we bring something that helps you out every once in a while or something. We're just family people here doing a family thing and letting y'all know what we enjoy doing. So, hey, give us a thumbs up like that one. Give us a subscribe like that one. And hit the bell like that one, you know. And uh, maybe y'all will win a blade or some wooden nickels or something too. So anyway, keeping it below 30 minutes, 2817 by the clock on the wall. We hope you guys have a wonderful, happy, and restful weekend. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. We hope to see you soon.